anybody in here today the reason why you keep on feeling like you're in a hopeless place because there's some people in your life that you need to cut them loose they keep on dragging and pulling on your spirit they keep on pulling on your joy you need to cut them loose you need to say I've had enough of ripping and running with you with your faithless doubting self oh faithless and perverse generation why in the world do I keep on bothering and messing with you I've got to cut you loose because God has began to shift my life I wish you would open your mouth and say God has begun to shift my life and where he's taking me to I can't bring the folk that don't love him the folk that don't want him the folk that are playing I'm in a shifting place I'm in a place where God says he's bringing me out and I'm coming out of my past stepping into my future I wish you would tell your neighbor say neighbor I'm coming out of my past stepping into my future as a matter of fact take a step and say God is moving me out of my past and oh into my future what God said what God spoke what God ordained now is my time now is my seed oh I'm coming out I'm coming out Oh, oh, and then, then, then I heard in his word, he said, tell my people, I brought you out to bring you in. Uh -huh, you couldn't go in until I brought you out. Why are you crying? about the stuff I brought you out of. You ought to be rejoicing about the stuff I'm bringing you into. Woo. Look at somebody and say he's bringing us in. Yes, yes, yes. And so he's brought us out of a slave mentality. No longer do we have to be driven by things that don't like us. No longer will the devil have the right of way. No longer will we accept the world's mentality as the right way to go. But I'm on my way out of my slave mentality. What are you talking about, uh, Brother Preacher? Uh, so uh, I'm about to mess up the message. Uh, right here, Elder Chief. This, this is where I messed the message up. When y'all get in the locker room, you know, the preacher's locker room, this is where you say, yeah, doc, he was doing good, man, but what he should, right there, see what he should have did. And, and, see, and he would have had the folk, he would have had the folk. But the slave mentality says that no longer do I need my gin and juice to make me feel like I can make it. No longer do I need a female for Monday a female for Sunday, a thought for Tuesday. Oh, I'm happy with Jesus alone. It's a slave mentality. I brought you out from among your haters. Some of y'all got some folk can't stand it. You don't know it because they act like they like you. They even act like they love you. They owe you money. They can't stand you. <laughs> he said, I'm bringing you out from among your haters. I know it's uncomfortable because you're used to being around your haters because your haters keep telling you how much they like you and what you don't realize that your haters keep digging out from under you. And they come and smile in your face. And then when you go home, they go. 
And what they're doing is digging out from under you. And you're trying to figure, why can't I get in front? Why can't I? Because you're running with the wrong folk. Now, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm trying to help. Sister Martin Favors, I'm trying to help. This is, this is not, I'm trying to preach. To, I don't know what it is I'm doing. I told you I'm all over the place. But, but, but let me tell you what to do. Turn to somebody and say, would you cooperate with God, please? Say the next time the Lord is trying to sever relationship, quit trying to put back together what God is severing. If they don't love you, you don't need them. If they don't want you, you don't need them. Quit trying to hold on to folk that's trying to get away from you. Let me skip through here. I forgot how to skip. Let me skip through here. Skip right past here. And then in my notes. But, but, let me skip back. Oh, let your haters go. Let your underminers go. Uh-huh. And I got to quit. But dang, it's getting hot in here. And so you and let your failures go. Some of you, God has forgiven you, but you haven't been able to forgive yourself. But you need to let your failures go. You need to make up your mind. God, if you didn't love me, you would have killed me by now. But you've allowed me to live this long. Because you've got something better for me. And my enemies can't block it. I'm going to close with this one verse. I have some more verses, but I ain't going to read them. They're good preaching verses. I'll preach them another time, and it'll still be a good verse because it's in the Bible and all the word of God is good. Yeah, uh uh-huh, this last verse. Isaiah 2 and 11. Last verse. And I'm going to close this message. Elder Smith, they told us one close per message. So here it is. I'm trying to have just one close. Go ahead, go ahead. Teach us. I took off my watch so I can act like I'm looking at something. I ain't got no time. I ain't got no sense at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. So one close per message. Isaiah 2 and 11. It said that the lofty looks of man shall be humble. There are some folks that have lifted up themselves and they're trying to put their foot on your neck. They don't want to see you break out into the glory of God. But he said, the lofty looks of man shall be humbled. I'm going to bring them down and I'm going to put them low. And the hardiness of man shall be bowed down. Mm-hmm. All you that's got your chest stuck out think you something because you can afford two shoes at a time. He said the hardiness of man shall be bowed down. And the Lord shall be exalted in that day. Somebody say with me, the Lord shall be exalted in that day.